Welcome to Database Naming Conventions. This activity introduces the naming conventions used in creating database objects. It includes interactive exercises so you can practice using these rules. Why convention? Many aspects of information technology development include the concept of naming conventions. Conventions are rules for naming things that aren't necessarily enforced by the tools and software used in the profession. Instead, these rules are often best practices established by a particular organization which all employees are expected to follow. One organization's naming conventions may not be the same as another's. While the rules or conventions may change throughout your career, the need to understand and adhere to conventions does not. As a database professional, naming conventions will help you maintain order and consistency in your work and allow you and others to share a common understanding. Over time, the meaning behind the objects can be more easily understood. While you may have your own particular convention for naming objects, your logic may not be apparent to others, so a shared understanding can't be achieved. Your convention may work for you, but others can't make sense of it. Even though you're a creator, others need to understand what you're trying to convey. The following are considered best practices in naming database objects with the SQL Server community. Use an easily understood and readable name. Pick comprehension over length. Short names aren't always better. Remember that names are long-lived. Data structures last longer than application code. Always pick a new and meaningful name instead of just adding a suffix or prefix to an already existing name. Pick a similar name when creating a new version of an existing object. Always use singular instead of plural. All relations that hold data should have singular names. This includes tables and views. For example, user is better than users. Developers leave, names stay. Pick a name that is easy for someone else to figure out. Give your name context. Avoid using nouns alone like text or timestamp. Use Pascal case for names. Spaces and underscores affect the overall performance of a database. Learn and use the already established naming conventions for the company you're working for. The naming conventions for your company may be different from the SQL community. The following guidelines identify practices to be avoided. Don't use symbols or other non-alphanumeric characters. This includes underscores, dashes, colons, and hyphens. This makes objects difficult to read for the SQL server and could affect the overall performance of a process. Avoid identifiers found in keywords of common programming languages. Some identifiers to avoid include class, function, and string. This can be confusing for those reading your code and can be a point of contention for the SQL server. Avoid quotation marks. Quotation marks are specifically used to identify parts of SQL commands or to limit data object names. Avoid white space and identifier names. SQL is not particularly sensitive to white spaces. However, using white space in naming can easily misrepresent the object name. Don't use abbreviations. An abbreviation makes sense to you, but is hard for someone else to figure out. Avoid using reserved words. If reserved words need to be used, appropriate delimiters also need to be used to signify this is an object name. The four benefits of naming conventions. Select each benefit to learn more. Creating order. A table named user extra data may make sense to you at the time but there is little chance your team members will be able to determine exactly what extra data represents. In this case, naming the table user external account data clarifies the table and contributes to a shared meaning. The name itself describes the purpose of the table and everyone on the team will immediately understand it. Tables that are created to join many-to-many -many relationships are also an area where accurate naming is important. What does the following name represent? It's obviously a table that relates users to resources, but how and why is unclear. 
It can become even murkier when there are multiple reasons to join the tables. How would you like to sort this one out? A better way to create order would be to include the intent in the name. Naming the table user downloaded resource instead of user underscore resource one makes it more apparent that the table is logging the resources that users are downloading. Likewise, the name user reviewed resource instead of user underscore resource two implies the table is used to capture data from users who are reviewing resources. Establish structure. An effective naming convention will build a structure that can be easily scaled. As more objects are added to a database, the more important it is to have a consistent structure. While it may be possible to work around inconsistent table and column names in a database with three or four tables, it certainly is not ideal. In a database with hundreds of tables and columns, inconsistency equals chaos, and databases and chaos do not mix. Increase productivity. In a database where inconsistent naming is used, the lack of understanding slows everybody down. When writing SQL statements, the extra time it takes to figure out if the column you want is named product underscore ID, prod ID, or just simply ID may seem minor, but in a large database with dozens of programmers on a team, those extra seconds add up fast. Spread out over a year, you may be surprised to see how many hours of productivity are lost. Better database performance. Cumbersome naming conventions can negatively impact database and query performance. Some of them are not readily visible and may take years of experience to discover. For example, avoid the prefix sp underscore when naming stored procedures in the SQL server. This name seems harmless, but in fact it causes SQL server to automatically check the master databases for the procedure first. This unnecessary trip through the master database can lead to real performance problems if you have dozens or hundreds of stored procedures running.